Rich Strani here with TMC. Thanks for watching. We're at IT Expo 2014 in Las Vegas, Nevada. John Reardon is with us. He's with uh, ONSIP. And uh, John, welcome to the show. Ah, thanks for having me. So uh, our pleasure. I was hoping we start um, at the beginning here, in, like I like to do with these interviews, and, and um, get some feedback on your company, what you're up to, what are some of the new things. Sure. Um, so uh, ONSIP has been around for about a decade, and uh, we got started sort of under the philosophy that uh, we were going to help enterprises move uh, voice communication and real-time communication generally uh, more onto the internet uh, with the notion that we could deliver them better uh, performance for a lower price uh, over the long period. And so here we are today. Uh, we're focused largely on WebRTC here today. Um, and at this show, uh, we've been working with WebRTC for about two years now. Uh, and we view it as a, a feature uh, that will enable us to deliver more value to our enterprise customers. Great. How do you do that exactly? Well, um, so WebRTC for us is uh, enabling a set of uh, features that um, are, are new, uh, that uh, allow our en enterprise customers to reach their customers more effectively, uh, deliver uh, a better better experience. So an example would be the prototypical example that people are uh, talk about a lot um, comes from uh, Amazon Mayday is uh, an example people are using. Uh, the notion is that if you've got customers out uh, on the internet, uh, you can, uh, while they're at your website, uh, you can allow them to contact you in a way that's uh, efficient and effective, uh, delivering uh, HD voice calls, video calls, as well as the context of, that they're in uh, to your, your people inside your, your enterprise. Um, so we are uh, enabling enterprises to provide uh, Amazon Mayday-like experience to their customers. Um, and that's an example. Um, but there are, there are a whole host of other examples um, uh, that WebRTC is enabling. Um, and that's the short of it. So are there any other changes you're seeing in the communication space uh, besides WebRTC that we should be aware of? Um, well, <laughs> that's a broad, open Open question. Uh, well, the communication space is, is constantly evolving and changing. Um, it's been something that's been going on for a long period of time. Uh, the, the ideas behind uh, HD voice in general, um, we're seeing uh, more and more of that. That's been around for a while now, but the experience is becoming more familiar for people. Uh, the quality of the calls um, uh, is something that um, provides a better experience for somebody. Um, Seeing calls come in um, more uh, over the top on cellular networks um, and uh, over, over the internet as well, moving more communication that way. Um, a whole host of sort of uh, unique applications that were um, largely undoable are becoming doable. So I wanted to flip around um, the question and ask you a different way. We'll touch on some of the same topics, I'm sure, but. If, if I'm a viewer out there watching, what are some of the pain points or the pain that you take away um, from me so I don't have to deal with these issues anymore? What are, can you list some of those so that they would know to call you and potentially be a customer? Sure. So um, if, uh, ultimately, if you're interested in, in utilizing WebRTC to develop a new channel for, to do communication, whether it's in, internal to your enterprise or uh, with uh, enter, your enterprise customers, um, and you start to travel down that path, there's a lot of heavy lifting that's been done now, uh, thanks to the WebRTC initiatives, uh, Google and Mozilla, uh, putting a lot of great code inside these browsers. Uh, on the mobile front, there's an expectation that uh, on Android later this year with the release of Lollipop, uh, you'll start to see a lot of native uh, Android applications being able to leverage this. Um, but while the barrier to entry there and the uh, cost to get started has dropped dramatically, um, there are still issues that uh, need to be addressed when you want to roll this out in server production environment. Uh, ultimately, there's a build versus buy uh, issue that comes up. Um, there's back-end infrastructure that needs to be deployed um, to handle signaling, uh, as well as media issues with regard to NAT traversal and firewall handling. Um, and there are lots of solutions out there, uh, more and more coming out every day. Uh, and you can acquire and license the equipment and run it and operate it yourself. Uh, if you want to deploy these solutions, or you can go to a third party um, and outsource it to a cloud-based solution. ONSIP uh, provides one of these uh, cloud-based service um, to allow you to uh, leverage that. Um, so we op own and operate a uh, SIP network um, that allows us to deliver um, robust 24-7 high performance um, services um, as opposed to building it and operating yourself. Um, 
Web R2C, uh, we've got, we're, one of the challenges for us has been um, working with developers. Uh, web developers are a new uh, group of people who are now tackling communications and bringing it into their applications. Uh, and we've been working with them uh, as a, ultimately a, an end user, effectively. And sorry if I miss it, but are you selling globally? Uh, we are selling globally. Uh, we're focused in the U.S. and North America at the moment. Um, and we've been doing more and more, more global stuff. Our company historically has provided a hosted PBX service. Um, and we're using WebRTC there, too, to integrate um, with the call center solutions there. And our hosted PBX solution has largely been focused in the uh, U.S. So uh, final question I want to ask, uh, what's next and anything else that we might have missed uh, about your company? Um, uh, We'll, we'll see what's next. Um, but um, the, uh, I, I don't know, I mean, the WebRTC has been the focus for us at the moment. Um, we've got a lot of interesting ideas coming down the pipe. Um, there are a lot of uh, vertical areas that can take advantage of this, particularly uh, we're seeing interest in healthcare uh, and uh, potentially gaming as well, um, and to give us examples. I mean, but the list goes on. So. Uh, one, of the, one of the areas we're focusing in, in on is as opposed to uh, targeting developers directly in a broad way, uh, looking to provide uh, specific solutions targeted at particular verticals. Um, and that's where I think our focus is going to be. In so basically way. like a law firm or a sure. doctor or sure. something like that? We've been seeing um, an example would be, um, uh, well, here's an example in a, even in a different vertical. Um, we've got a, we're working with people who are delivering um, calls to talk radio shows. So uh, the experience for a talk radio show now, um, radio is effectively HD in a lot of cases, uh, but historically the callers have been coming in over traditional telephone calls. The quality of those calls has been dramatically and noticeably lower than the quality of the radio show itself. Um, people are interested in delivering um, the calls to the radio stations uh, over the internet using HD codecs. Um, and delivering it um, from their websites and mobile applications. That's mobile. really a great, great idea, great concept, because so, I know a so, lot of my uh, radio stations that I listen to, a lot of talk radio I listen to, um, that's a challenge. Yeah. That and cell phones. Yes. And so that's an example of a, a sort of a, a targeted niche, but healthcare as well, law firms, uh, mentoring systems in general, uh, places where people are trying to connect to experts uh, to have a, a session uh, remotely. Um, a lot of video fun uh, functionality. Awesome. Well, thanks for being on the program. This was wonderful. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Nice to the see time. you.